Experience the perfect blend of culinary delights, entertainment, and education on the number one food podcast in the country, Walk and Talk Podcast. Join host Carl Fiadini and the amazing chef Jeffrey Schlissel. Feed your appetite. Find this podcast on Apple and Spotify. food fam this is the walk and talk podcast where you'll find the perfect blend of food fun and cooking knowledge i'm your host carl fiadini welcome to the number one food podcast in the country we're recording at ibis images where food photography comes alive and i get to eat it first things first last week we had jillian childs founder of florida farm finder she stopped by the studio to have a bite talked it was a great time um If you like farms and you want to figure out how to buy local, go back to the episode if you missed it. I urge you to listen. Um, So uh, what did the uh, Salisbury steak say to the mashed potatoes? You're my butter half. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. (sighs) You know, Chef Jeffrey is traveling back in time to cook up the 80s TV dinner Goliath, the granddaddy of all TV dinners. Yes, Salisbury steak. My nostalgic food memory is getting heated up, so pull out your folding tray table, get your TV clicker, and get ready for some remix old school dinner delicacies, baby. Um, thank you, Peninsula Food Service, for well for being wonderful and supplying the proteins for today's production. Chefs in the Central Florida area, Peninsula is the largest distributor of Creekstones Farm beef in the Southeast United States, uh, complete with a fully staffed butcher shop to help you solve your kitchen inconsistencies. Check out their dry age program, too. Oh, I love that dry age. Our guest this week is World Food Championships host and MC, the suit guy, the Mark Conway. Uh, Team Walk and Talk was at the show in Dallas this past November. It was a banger. And guess what? Their final table, their their like Super Bowl is coming up uh, in April. Food sport is a big deal. We'll tell you why. Stay tuned. Oh, man, you know, I tell you what. I mean, did you see that, how that flowed, Jeff? Yeah, I heard the dad joke and it stopped listening. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Get out of here. Fired. Get out of here. All right. Uh, look, Jefferson. You got to say pop the clutch because it's the, you know I'm, what I mean? I'm doing it right. Jefferson, pop that clutch. Let's get let's get in gear and go, baby boy. What Just so got? everyone knows that it's probably younger, or maybe in their 30s, 20s, and younger than that. Pop the clutch refers to a manual transmission. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Back in the day. You know, it's like real. just a real silly thing. Um, I love stick. When it's somebody else's, like if somebody says, here's the keys for a few hours, man, I have a great time, but I would never want that for myself. Never. I did. I, for the longest, did. longest period of time. I think the last car I had was a stick was a 93 Mazda. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you can't eat French fries and, you know, drive oh, with it. It's a pain you, you find ways to do what you need to do. You do. You do. Whatever. It's not, Anyhow. It's not legal, but you find it. All right. Come on. We're talking 80s. We're talking uh, like Chips. ashtrays and, you know. Magnum PI. Magnum PI. And, all right. Folding tables. Go Iron it. side. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's oh, back in the day. Like, seriously, when I was, if I came home from school, this is, this is my snack. It was a Hungry Man dinner. Yeah. And we were talking about it earlier. Remember, it was all foil back yeah. before microwaves came out and you would put it in your toaster oven wait what a half an hour 45 minutes to finally get it cooked and you had your meal and i remember when we first came out with trying to do this somebody actually uh texted me or emailed me and said make sure you have that cherry blob on the plate and i completely forgot about that cherry kind of pie they had but i noticed you know, remember the blueberry i remember the brownie and stuff like that so I went to the supermarket looking at what they have. There's not a big selection of Hungry Man. I thought there would be an increase, but there's what, Salisbury steak, a grilled you know, like meat something. I can't remember what they called that. Um, chicken wings was something new I saw. Fried boneless chicken breast, fried chicken. And I'm like, let's. how can we elevate this? So I just concentrated on the fried chicken, concentrated on the Salisbury steak, using Peninsula's product that was absolutely fantastic. And then I think it was the 
chicken wings we smoked and then the turkey breast we smoked too on the bone. So it's just changing it up. And it just it was fantastic. I loved it. And John did a great job as as always. Yeah, but but hold on, man. You're not doing just honestly, like you're not doing justice <laughs> to what what you what you put together today. Well, it's it, to me it's just cooking. It's nothing spectacular for me. I mean, it's Look, we're trying to keep an audience entertained. I don't, I don't know if you realize that, but like What's going to be entertaining is the pictures that they're going to see with John. Yeah, for sure. But let me tell you something. You did the brown the, the, that brownie was freaking amazing. You had the whatever it was the the blood ruby cherry, red ruby red whatever. Like, come on, dude. What are you talking about? And and those wings. <laughs> John should actually comment on the wings because he finished them. Ah, screw that guy. Look, but I'm trying to. <laughs> well, he I'm doesn't tr- talk. Yeah, I know. Whatever. It's like he, he's making faces, but nobody can see it. Mm-hmm. We got to get the video cameras back. Yeah, we should. That's what I think. But no, it, it, to be honest with you, the elevation of smoking the meat, especially the chicken wings and the turkey, I think elevates the whole thing in itself. But the brownie, as you were saying, I had the ruby red chocolate. That was just amazing in itself. Um, but I think really where we went above and beyond was the blueberry cobbler with the hint of bourbon in there in the background, yeah. a little lemon zest. And then in the cherry, um, what I did with that when I soaked the cherries, the drunken cherries, remember that it was a couple months ago. So these things were like seriously <laughs> in, like drunk blue uh, bourbon. But then I took Grand Marnier, hit it with Grand Marnier, orange or tangerine zest. And then what I figured out was going to be really good in my head was... Got to hit it with some chocolate. Chocolate and cherries go really well together. And it was fantastic. I didn't get to try it, but here's the thing. You guys are taking back, well, John's not going to take back, but you're going to take back to your house yes. is that pecan yes. <laughs> batter of the... <laughs> yes. That was ridiculous. Your food is, uh, in, intoxicates me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, but the story behind Salisbury steak is, to me, is pretty interesting. And it, and it, it goes back to the 19th century and Dr. James H. Uh, Salisbury, uh, which, you know, so apparently you can look this up. You know, he, he was an advocate of a meat based diet. And this is like way back when. And initially it was just, a, you know, a simple ground beef patty with salt and pepper. Uh, and I guess, you know, that kind of evolved over time. But, you know, when you get to the 80s. It was, that was the staple. And it used to be where you had to put stuff in toaster ovens. But then when that microwave, you know, that, that microwave moment, like everything changed, changed. you know, uh, cause I remember as a kid, just, you know, Salisbury steak, Swedish meatballs, Stouffer's uh, pizza, stuff like that, man. And it was just, man. you put pizza. No, I remember. No, you would put that in the oven, but uh, no, no, there was uh, Elio's. Elio's. Elio's had that special thing the, that you actually and yeah. it heated the whole pizza. Oh, yeah. John's getting a little giddy yeah. over there. I used to love Elio's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember at the house, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah. Things are already, everything's changed. All right. Um, what else you got to say? I thought you were going to, you know, I'm a little disappointed. I'm honest with you. <laughs> Show's going downhill fast. Well, here's the thing. You said salt and pepper on Salisbury steak. Where did Worcestershire, Dijon mustard, and ketchup come into play? I, you know what? I don't know, but it, it needed it because it was fantastic. The, the, the sauce that you put on there for that, you know. Well, you know, here, here's the thing about the Hungry Man. Like, we looked at the, the ingredient list, right? And you see that huge long list of ingredients. What was kind of funny to me was the actually caloric, total caloric uh, thing for the meal was 390 calories for the turkey, 400 and something, less than 500 calories for the Salisbury steak, which doesn't seem so bad. But when you look at <laughs> the Dude, fried chicken. But the ingredients list is is a mile long. It's ridiculous. You know, and it's a lot of, you know. Uh, what, Google, well, how do you say? <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. P-O-T. You know I mean? Well, listen, that's the problem, I think, in our food chain that we're talking about. And we've, we've touched in different places. It's the whole GMO thing. and It's not just the GMO. It's the science behind it that they're putting all the junk in it. That, you know, I was listening to the radio the other day and some guy, he's lost in nine months. He's lost 100 pounds. And all he has done is read the back of a label. And if he couldn't pronounce the word, he didn't buy the product. And that was the thing. And if we're seeing with some of the like the food trends that I was telling you to watch that movie, when you see that movie, you'll see the whole science behind how our body, you know, in the 1950s, Wonder Bread wasn't around. We actually produced bread the way it's supposed to be done. When Wonder Bread came out, we had a, people got sick. So what did they do? Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E. So we put vitamins in it to, to band-aid that problem instead of just focusing on, hey, if we produce food, the right way might take more time, then things will be better. The problem is, is that no one has time to do anything anymore. 
Well, that's true. I know I don't. <laughs> I'm like, you, I am a perfect example of... Um, well, it, you take two hours every day to post. Yeah. Five days a week. That's 10 hours right there out of I your know, life. 10 hours out of my life. So, so It's 120 audience, hours a week that you have between sleeping. That's what we have, 120 hours. I, uh, but I do it for the audience. I do it for the consumer of what we do. You know, it's, it's my sacrifice um, for them. So they have some, something interesting, not just, you know, all the other dreg that you, uh, you know, find on the Internet. It's, we're doing a service to society. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, I, I wish we could actually, well, we are going to be, actually teach people how to, you know, cook and tell them the little chef secrets, too. Like the first uh, class I'll be doing is knife skills. Interesting. Yeah. 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 And no, I actually you're, the one, you're one missing a pinky. Oh. Oh, no. I got them on my fingers. Oh, okay. They've all got cuts on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I don't know if you're the guy for this, but it's going to work out. All right. At least I wasn't like the two guys when they were doing the Metro thing and they were doing the chop contest. Yeah. Like their speed, how fast they can cut. And it was the dojo guy from, he was to the coach and somebody else. I think it was McFadden was doing up there too. I think uh, the guy in the suit would know that. The suit guy would know yeah, well, who it was. Well, you know what? You're, you're kind of boring today. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me get Mark on and, uh, you know, move on. I, want to, I don't want to lose the rest of the people listening right now. Okay? <laughs> Tell you what. Even John It was the said, dad joke that turned everyone off. They've already stopped listening. I got confirmation from a couple of... A butter random, half. A butter. that The, the dad jokes are, <laughs> are a keeper. They're a keeper. Can I speak to that person or are they related no. to you? No, nobody, if they were, nobody, listen, nobody who knows me is backs me up. Okay. That's it. So, so then where'd you get your information from? The voices in your head? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then right. There you go. All right. Silence. All right. Forget it. Um, please welcome to the program, Mr. Mark Conway. How are you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Ah, God, if I was any better, if I was any better, dude, I would be you. Pink suit is what he would be wearing. Mm. Just like at Nathan. That's right. That's right. I mean, you got to add some some shine, maybe some sparkles, maybe some sequins, sequins, and then, glitter. Then we'll remember talk. that? Remember that suit he put on that one day? I was like, "Wow, you're going all." That was Thursday, right? I say it every time I get on the every time Mark and I are on the phone. I I somehow you know in the conversation, I find a way to tell him that I cannot pull it off. There's there's it's impossible that I would be able to literally fill his shoes. Like I there's no way I can I can do what he does. Just can't. I, you know, I think you can. You just got to put it on and, and rock it and go, yeah, this is me. What do you want to do about it? That would be a lie. That would be an abject lie. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, can't do he it. can't even walk across grass without worrying about getting his food, his shoes do it dirty. <sighs> Honest to God today. Listen, I'm wearing like princess. White, I'm wearing like <laughs> pristine white sneakers. Princess. And I chose not to walk across the lawn to go into the studio. Do you know what I mean? Like, is that a, pr- I don't think that's so bad. I think uh, most people are going to listen to that and go, no, you know, mm-hmm. princess. No, I, I mean, I have, I have shoes that are for walking in grass and I have shoes that I don't walk in grass. In. It makes total sense. Yeah. See, like it, it's, this is, this is common sense. Now let's get into the world food championships i'm excited for you man this is a big deal coming up in april walk and talk podcast now sweetened by noble citrus bite into a juicy crunch tangerine 40 years perfected seedless and oh so tasty or savor a starburst pomelo the giant citrus with a unique zing. Don't miss autumn honey tangerines, big and easy to peel. Noble. Generations of citrus expertise, delivering exceptional flavor year-round. Taste the difference with Noble Citrus. I mean, it's huge. You've got, you you know, we just watched the Super Bowl. We saw the playoffs leading up to the Super Bowl. So if you can kind of put it into context, the World Food Championships there in Dallas that took place in November, that's kind of your playoffs. Then when you get to April, which will be in Bentonville for the final table, that is, like you said earlier, it, that's that's the Super Bowl. That's when the 11 category competitors are going to go head-to-head battling out this culinary gauntlet that I'm creating 
to determine who's the one reigning world champion and walks away with one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is it one hundred and fifty grand? That's amazing. That's just so amazing. Yeah, they just jumped it up. I think this will be the first year that it goes from one hundred and fifty. Last year it was a hundred. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty crazy. And uh, so we're talking, uh, if we're talking like repeats, we're talking like Michael Jordan with a treat three Pete and stuff like that. Like you got to bring up John McFadden, right? I mean, it, it, are there odds? Can I bet on this? Is there a, is there a thing? Cause I want to get, I want to be in on this. Oh, there should definitely be odds because there's never been a repeat winner. This is going to be year number 12 and still, People have made it into final table, but they have never repeated as champion. This is just something that when you look at sports and you've got those very rare back-to-back or three-peats, like you brought up with Jordan, and Jordan did it twice. When it comes to World Food Championships and food sport, there has not been a back-to-back champion. And John McFadden, really from an odds-on, he's about the closest I've seen in this, it, to be in a position that could possibly pull it off. So his personality is pretty, pretty top notch. I mean, I, I got to spend some time with him while we were, uh, you know, while we were in uh, all in Dallas together, and ju- and I was able to judge uh, his event. And um, at, I mean, he is like a machine, and he's incredibly organized. And what he does with all of his prep and, and, and just as mise en place and just the, his efforts are incredible. And he does it solo. What, he has a pretty interesting yeah, I mean, story, right? What, what, what's, um, get into that a little bit, Mark. I mean, you're talking about a guy that it's like the chefinator, like he is just, you, he's a, he's a machine. He started cooking in kitchens as a 12 year old and literally over closing in on 40 years has built a a chef resume that would rival just about anybody. I mean, you're talking about awards being, you know, one of the first and youngest Australian chefs to be invited to cook at the James Beard house. I mean, this is a guy who's done it all. He has done white tablecloth. He's done QSR. He's done catering, consulting. And this is all before he ever decided to enter the Australian food championships to win his way to world foods. This is a guy who still wears the white toque. I mean, he is chef. When you you look at the old world, old style chefs, that's what this guy is. And his pedigree that he has forged since being 12 uh, really blows the socks off of anybody he stands next to. And to cook at the World Food Championships by yourself. And again, so that you understand for anybody who's never been there, you're talking about... 30 teams per category, somewhere between 20 and 30 teams per category over the years from 30 different countries. So you're in all told about 300 teams. They generally run somewhere between a two man team and a five man team with three people cooking at any given time. John does this alone. That's like taking the NBA finals and you're going to go up against a five man squad with one guy. Well, you know, it's interesting what about does. that. Yeah. And, and to, I'm going to take it a step further, right? Because <clears throat> while I was a spectator watching him uh, do what he does, he's not just cooking solo, but he's also a showman and he's mm-hmm. interacting with the crowd, uh, with the people who are watching and, uh, you know, kids are walking by or whatever. And he's, and he's actually, he's communicating and inter- interacting with these people as he's doing all of his, uh, you know, high end culinary and st- I mean, it's pretty amazing. He's an amazing dude. Um, I mean, he's cracking jokes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he, he's a showman. He's an abject showman. But you guys are forgetting something. He's not just cooking one meal. It's not one plate he turns in. Right. How many plates does he need to turn right. in, Mark? He's got to cook one presentation plate and five judge samples. Yeah, I just so want to make sure that six- yes. Yeah. Total plates, six total plates by himself. Mm-hmm. By himself. By the way, in how many hour. how many members of Team France were in that thing team? <laughs> this last they had year, five people that were rotating in and out. 
Team France was like Wu Tang Clan. Like it was, it was, I mean, it was, they had like twenty was, people. They had a whole entourage. It was ne- yeah. It was never. You're like, oh my god, there's another one and another, another one, one and another one. It and we went. We were at them. They were out to dinner with us with Jay uh, John Paul. Yeah, yeah. And I, they kept on coming. I'm like, what the? Yeah. But here's John McFadden, the Lone Star General that's out there just pumping and humping it away, man. Yeah, he I, killed it. Now, you know, did you guys see his battle plan? Did you guys see John's battle plan that he carries with him when he does this? No. 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 Oh, my God. This battle plan, battle plan goes at minute one, he will have this done. By minute two, it's this. By minute three, say three minutes and 30 seconds, he will have this done. It is literally played out for the entire length of the cooking time from minute one to either minute 60 or minute 90. He knows exactly where he's got to be. It's unbelievable to see somebody do this. And what were they cooking on, John? Uh, what were they cooking on? The kitchens, not gas. They're right? mirrored kitchens. No, no, it's all electric, and they're mirrored kitchens. It's your your typical four burner range. You've got an oven like you would inside a house. You've got metro carts and setups for for chefs tables and that. It is not anything necessarily that you wouldn't have at home. It's so it's basically a home and this guy's kitchen. Busting out that. Yeah, it's a home kitchen. Yeah, yeah, and he's busting out literal. Five star James Beard, you know, food out of this this make made up home kitchen setup. It's beautiful. It's amazing. The gear is fantastic, but it is it pretty much is what you've got at home. Well, look, I want to I want to say one more thing about John Chef John before we you know because I want to hear about some of the other contestants too. Um, we had him on the program, and um, I'll tell you, l- literally. Within two days of publishing his episode, our show on Apple was ranking in Australia, which is amazing. The guy gets like invited to uh, to Parliament or whatever they, you know, whatever they're. Um, well, they made a whole speech about him winning. I know. In Parliament, yeah, oh, like he's, he's a, a rock star. He's he's a rock star. He's a legend over there. It's amazing. Yeah. Like he's an Australian rock star. Yeah, and he goes over there. He's on every TV show, every morning news show. Every radio show. I don't know how he has any time to cook. He's like running around as a celebrity. You know, and, and he's a great father and, and, and the whole bit too. He's a good, he's a super good guy. But I can't believe we publish within two days. We're, I think we're ranking in the top 20 in Australia for, for, uh, for, you know, quite a bit. <laughs> top, top 10, maybe. I mean, whatever. Uh, that's what happens when you have the, uh, the Australian Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> yes. The, the crocodile Ramsay, it is indeed. All right, so there I was, minding my own business. Come on, that was good. That was good. Even John's shaking his head on that one. Come on. Crocodile Ramsey. That's Everybody's my... shaking his head on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank my you, Mark. Cat is shaking its head right now. <laughs> okay. All right. You're all fired. Okay. Um, so t- who else? All right. Who who else are we looking at? Like what what's um who, who else is in this thing? Well, I mean, you've got here's the crazy thing about this year. It's 11 this year, not 10, because we added the extra category. And you've got a team from France. You've got two from London. You've got Australia. Then you've got four competitors that are repeating in their categories from the previous year. So you got four guys that have been to final table before because they were literally there last year. You've got four international teams, which is the most we've ever had at final table. And you've got an Air Force team. Like, this is the craziest group of culinarians that you're going to come across competing in in a three-stage gauntlet that I am making damn sure is incredibly challenging for any of them. Well, but this is going to so be a wild ride. When you say gauntlet, I mean, I, I obviously I know a lot of this is on on the hush. Is there anything you can tell us and the audience about uh, yeah. kind of what you're going to do? American Ninja. One of them. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Culinary Ninja. I'm going to make everybody, they're all cooking in the dark and they got to make their own fire. No, it, <laughs> every, every one of them, every year, we've, we've installed one. The Culinary Gauntlet will alter each year, but one is a mainstay, and that is the Taste and Recreate. So essentially... I have one of the chefs there in Bentonville, hasn't been released yet, who, but I can tell you, James Beard nominated. They're going to taste a dish by the chef, 
but they get to look at it, eat it, move it around with a fork, take pictures, ask very high level questions. They can't come down and get specific. And then they have to come back the next day and completely recreate that dish from scratch. Hmm. Huh. Okay. And it is last year, watching them last year, Rios, the chef down there that did this with him last year, made a dish that he just never had on his own menu because all of them went there trying to Google every recipe the guy had online. <laughs> but we've got to make it a new dish. So they don't, they won't even know what's there. So that is one of the legs that is consistent. The other two big surprises uh, literally are going to impact all your senses. Hmm. Okay. So it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. We're not doing it for the podcast, just so you know. Yeah, no. I'm looking at you. Yeah, no. Okay. Well, maybe. I mean, you know, we got to do something there. You it's can... all visual. Well, and I, I can't say, I can't break this here. We haven't even told anybody this yet. Yeah. We're setting up to live stream components from this final table, and we haven't done that in a few years. So there's actually going to be live streaming elements from this year's final table on the World Food Championship social media and website. I saw that. And, you know, that sounds really cool. And I, I noticed the uh, the rebrand um, looks great as well. Oh, yeah. Yep. I, I, whoever uh, whoever's mm-hmm. doing that, doing a great job. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about this whole thing. Uh, at some point, I can't wait into, you know, looking forward in the future, you know, having, you know, uh, you know, more visual, more video, more action of what's going on. I mean, the fact that there's, you know, three, four, 5,000 um, um, people a day that are going through this, uh, going through this event in, in Dallas, man, that was crazy. So many people that are watching this and, and participating not to mention there was a thousand or so uh, competitors. It's amazing. It's it's so large and, and you just can't wrap your brain around it. And we're looking at that, that number growing by five or tenfold with the move to Indianapolis. Uh-huh. And you're talking about a city that understands international sporting events on a grand scale. And they wanted food sport. They wanted the highest level food sport in Indy where they host the Indy 500. Yeah. Interesting. So, uh, where is it in Indy? Is it going to be at the convention center in Indy? It's going to be at a brand new fairground center. This thing is monstrous. It is an open pallet. They're, they've got the capability to run gas lines and electricity down from the ceiling, reconstruct walls. It is an amazing facility. So, we're going gas on, on the going forward? That's what we're talking. We're in talks with now. There's very possible, there's a strong possibility we could have gas this year. Attention, chefs and food buyers. Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service with 25 butchers on staff. Their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the Southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service cut your beef burdens away and ask about their dry-aged program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. I mean, I feel like you need a podcast there. I'm just saying, you know, you want to call it I mean, yeah, Mike I, and, you know, put that together. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, poke eating with a stick. Yeah, something like that. I can with do a it. sharp one. A sharp one. Yeah, I can do it. I can yeah. do it. So big question. Um, probably one yep. of the biggest questions of the day here. Have you picked your wardrobe yet? Of course he has. <laughs> All of them? Uh, for- no, of course not. I, I'm. How many I days? don't pick my wardrobe till probably a week prior. Really? Do uh, you just listen, uh, people? No, you're there. not going to buy wait, anything wait, new wait. from Amazon. Wait a second. Wait a second, folks out there, who, you know, listening. What you need to do is, Mark, what's your what's your uh, IG handle? Mark Conway Media. Yeah, you need to you need to look him up, and and just absorb and experience what is the 
Mark Conway and the wardrobe of Mark Conway. And then I don't believe you when you say that you only wait a week out. Like I, I can't, I don't believe you. <laughs> that, that means you must have like well, ward, wardrobe handlers. You know what I'm saying? Well, ironically enough, I'm literally in talks right now with a company who wants to start custom making all my suits. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it should be because what I can see, because if, if I were you, I would be the guy like wardrobe, <laughs> wardrobe, you know, like, like that. It would be, it would I be, see lights yeah. soon. I see flashing <laughs> lights literally like that sequence suit that he had on. Uh, was that the, the green one? No, there was one that was like metallic and oh, yeah. rainbowish. Oh, that was the disco Iridescent. Ball. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. I remember. I remember. You took the picture that with him. That was a disco ball. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally a walking disco ball <laughs> but he pulled yeah, it off it was great yeah i think you could do that you should do that for um, the 7th of march i cannot <laughs> i cannot do that listen your birthday is the sixth right it is, yeah, so we'll buy that we'll, we'll collectively john and i will buy you the iridescent suits <laughs> no i think that needs to happen I think if you guys can just hush, okay? Because <laughs> uh, it's not going to happen. Yeah, we we well, have one of those battery operated suits. Uh, negative, like see, like <laughs> LEDs. <laughs> it, okay, if you ever did that, if you didn't want me to show up, then you would actually, you know, buy this thing because I would, I just wouldn't go. I wouldn't do it. It doesn't, it doesn't match me. <laughs> you know. You know, with the I clean just, white shoes. You haven't even you tried. Might. Why are you guys staring at me? Like, what is what is this? Because <laughs> I think the listeners would want to see that. Your audience, yeah. that you take 10 hours a yeah. week, they would want you in a suit like that. And if you don't, guys, tell in the comments. Send an email to over to Carl. There you go. I know Amy's already going to be... Uh, <laughs> she's going to hear this. And she's <laughs> Not oh, just yeah. Amy. Amy. Vicky, Vicky, Fiona. Yeah, Fiona. Brian, Brian, it's yeah. gonna be an all. It's gonna be a trending hashtag right now. <laughs> hashtag get Carl a suit. N- not a suit. I have suits. No, no. One a, of one of a, the suit guys. No, 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 no. Suits. <laughs> yeah, something with glitter. No, man. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> get, we gotta get Mike, uh, Mike Henry, and then uh, uh, Mark Henry, Mar- yeah. Mark Henry, and Bri Duffy, and uh, get them to send something out to you. If, if if I tell you what, if Mark Henry reaches out. You know, because Brian, I know Duffy will do it. He'll be, he'll be like, no, oh, definitely, yeah. definitely will listen Mark, to this and be like, you're putting it on. If Mark Henry <laughs> reaches out, then I'll do it. Mark, you heard that, right? Mm-hmm. Suit guy, you, you got to make the arrangements. Yeah. If I, if I, if I, I get, so I can just send a text right now. If I get, an, if I get on my <laughs> IG, Mark saying, you know, you got to put that on. Uh, you know, you, hey man, you got to, you got to wear the, and then I'll do it. All right. I, I have Look, a, John's already looking at the Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you guys don't get the pick. Search on Amazon. Oh no, we oh, get the no, pick. No, no, no. Oh yeah, we do. Wait a minute. Wait. No, Conway. Does. I get the pick. Yeah, oh, Conway. okay. Con- I'm Conway. okay with that. Good. I I trust Mark Conway to pick. Some, but you two, Jackamos, forget about it. Oh, you guys would. No, you guys would thrash me. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. God, forget it. You no, I would not do that to you. You know what you? You know what you search on Amazon? The the, the God's honest truth. You search weird. Suit coat. Oh geez, because <laughs> he's got he's Suit? got his okay, iPad out right now. He's already doing it. Oh my god, what do, what do you got? So I'm I'm on the show by myself. They're scrolling Amazon currently. It's uh, I have no more producer. <laughs> it's it's, and he bought something. Okay. Oh, he's right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. See, there you go. That's all you got to do. Oh, There's wow, the secret. That. <laughs> See that red one? Look at oh, that. look at the blue one. Oh man. <laughs> Then you gotta get Carl an orange one. What? Oh no, no, no. There's one that's got this Is that like, because is that because I'm Italian? Blue, yeah, like orange, jail. red. Oh. What? I actually no the rain. Yeah, I like that one over there. I can't believe that this is happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I found it. Right there. That red one. Uh let me see. Wait, wait, let me see. Let me see. Oh, let me see. if you like that, then we know you're Italian. I, I don't mind that. <laughs> I just, uh, <laughs> send, 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 send that to Mark. Send it to Mark, or send it to me. I'll send it to Mark. Uh, uh, yeah, because I, I don't yeah. even I don't mind that. I, I don't think hate this that. needs to be a. I think this needs to be a social media vote. Oh boy! <laughs> oh, crowdsourcing oh, vote. Geez. I love that. Oh my god! Oh jeez! I am so into that one. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I started sweating. Wow! Um, this is gonna be great. Uh, I'm Go only doing this. Shoes. I'm only doing this with a with a Mark Henry uh, involvement. Uh, don't worry, you're gonna get a text in like two minutes. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> All right. So who else is runner up here? What other teams we have? What, t- t- Mark, uh, let's get back on track here. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm about yeah, to hang up yeah, the headphones yeah. and run out of here. <laughs> well, ironically, one of the teams who's repeating Damon Holter from Coy Valley, he started wearing these flashy custom shoes. Cause he's like, man, it, it just works for you. So I got to do something. I got to do something to stand out. So he goes this year, comes back to defend his title in sandwich with custom made flashy, amazing shoes, wins the category again. So he's coming back to repeat. And this guy, literally, if the, if you want to look up people with an unbelievable track record of winning food sport championships of every type, barbecue, steak, burger, sandwich, or world foods, chili. He showed up at chili uh, last year for the first time ever and wins a category. You talked to that dude, didn't you? Which one is it? The guy who won sandwich. Yeah, yeah that's Damon Holter. Yeah, I think yeah. he had that hat, the kind of weird looking hat, and he yeah. had the beard. And... Yeah, he has the hat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. You didn't go on the podcast. Oh, yeah. No, you're thinking Fred. You're thinking Fred, the barbecue guy. No, 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 no. This dude was not. He was in a, du- a whole bunch of different ones. He was an older gentleman. Yeah, he's, yeah. Well, they're uh, not Fred. Fred this was. This dude is not flashy enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm pretty sure I know who it is, and he's a good dude. He's a good dude. Um, yeah, but he, he literally all year long travels the food sports circuit, winning championships in about every category. And that doesn't even touch the fact he has an entire product line that continues to win championships at each one of these events. So you've got, he's repeated. You have Dan Rain, who came out of nowhere last year or year before last to, to win his category, and he's back. He won his category again, so he's coming back again. Uh, Bethany Bodecker, she won dessert two now two years in a row. This will be her second final table. And, like, this is going to be probably the most diverse group of champions we've ever had at a final table. Definitely the most global. You know, uh, for a question for someone that's uh, a novice like myself, when they go to final table, are they in the same categories or is it just dessert might be switching no, gears? A clean slate. Huh? Yeah, so everybody's doing the same thing. It's all a clean slate. So essentially you'll go in, they show up, and they're going to go into the first leg of the gauntlet, the first challenge, and there'll be all 11 competitors. At the end of that first challenge, uh, five of them are gone. So hmm. in second challenge, you've got six that'll go into it. At the end of that challenge, you're going to be down to your final three. So in the finale, the final leg of the competition, you only have your top three competing and determine who's going to win the whole thing. Yeah, but so they're not going like bacon, hamburger, or um, no. the other nope. ones. No, nope. categories are gone at that point. Now it's just everybody is running the gauntlet. I feel like Jeff. I feel like you. We you should be in the sandwich. Uh, we should get you involved in us. I told you we can't. Why? If we're podcasting, it's kind of not what ethical. Does to, what does that have to do with it? Because when I win, hello. <laughs> when well, when just, I win, I'm going to interview uh, the people. That's not right. No, no but just, McCon- get, well, just fire him from the podcast for the week. <laughs> yeah, you're, I mean, I'm about. To Thanks, do, Mark. I'm about to do that. He does anyway. that every week until I go the next week and he gets something. And he's like, "Ooh, that's good." I'm about, yeah, it's about to happen anyhow. I mean, what are we talking about here? <laughs> no, because listen, we can get you know, uh, Pooch can stand in, and you you compete, man. You do the do the sandwich. In fact, why don't we just we walk into you, somebody's house? Oh, we already did that. We we um. <laughs> we get um, Chef Jason over here and uh, Jason Chef Greg and a couple of the other walk and talk uh, cats. And uh, we do the whole like big shebang. Oh, Greg uh, Ritchie. I'm yeah, sure man. Yeah. Well, why, why don't you have those guys compete? Uh, okay. So I want you to do it. That because be- for crying out loud, Jason's going to go for a master chef. Yeah. So he needs to, to practice to yeah, go and compete. No, 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 no. Yeah. He can come. Like, no, he you, should you, compete. You guys be on the same team. Oh, the you team. Dig? Gotcha. Yeah, you dig? Well, I don't know if I should you're do not, that because yeah, so you're John, not a team dynamic. You're no John McFadden. Okay? You can't do this. <laughs> do you solo. see what I put out in a house? 
Do you see what I put out in the house? Do I, I not entertain you? You do entertain <laughs> me. That's it. I love it. You feed me too. Like <laughs> feed me, Seymour. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> you know. But by the way, that's a reference to a movie. Oh my god! <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> we've, we've hit the we've hit the age where we have to like explain the movie. Get out of here. Oh, my daughter's the worst. I have the eleven year old oh, back in your day, Dad. I'm like, oh. you know, I've never said. So growing up, we used to say. Hey, in the olden days, right? Okay, now that I haven't heard a re- that reference in a very long time. My son, who's five, <laughs> you know, and I'm old as, as can be. My son comes up and says, "Daddy, Daddy, um, in the olden days, did?" You, and he asked me some question, but I was like, "In the old, I'm looking. I'm like, where did you even hear that? I'm, I don't say. It. Nobody in my house says it. I mean." Yeah, but think about the olden days to us are the 90s and 80s to no, them. The reference. Oh, I know. No, but that's what they're day. referring oh, you know, to my, is the 80s and 90s. No, dude. He's five years old. My 12-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. What did they do I've to you? I've got twin. Yeah, I got twin girls, right? And my, my one really, really quick-witted one, we're having popcorn. And she looks over at me while we're watching a movie and she's eating her popcorn. She's like, Dad, did you guys have popcorn when you were a kid? <laughs> Oh my god! I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> like, this is literally where your brain goes. I, uh, She's like, yeah. I don't know what Did they have that back then. How do I process that? I, the fact that you still have a full head of hair with twin, like, I don't even know uh, <laughs> how you're doing that. <laughs> wow, that's pretty amazing. Uh, good. We'll, we'll just say good genetics. I guess so, man. I don't know. Like, I'm, I feel like all my hair is falling out. Like, no, Mark's, Mark's uh, little gimmick was that he got out of the kitchen and he does what he's doing now. That's why. Yeah. That's why he still has full set. Oh, hair. yeah. Yeah. You yeah. get out Get out of the... I made sure of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. All right. Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. But right. who, who Mark, is you, new? You, we talked about people that were repeating. Who's new going into the final that um, it's their first time going into the final table? Can you remember offhand? Well, that's the beauty. Yeah, of course I do. Sure. That's what, the, you know, the Internet's for. <laughs> uh, but the beauty of this, these first-time champs that are going in is the fact that you've got guys that are coming in from things like the barbecue world, right? And the barbecue champions that are there right now, that they're almost, I don't want to say they're interchangeable, but you don't ever really see barbecue teams repeat. That's a category that next to never repeats. Whereas some of the other ones, you'll get that kind of thing to happen from time to time. And, you know, of course now the internet wants to fail me on my lovely list. But (laughs) when you talk about these competitors that are coming back in, the biggest, the biggest surprise for a lot of people was the Jean Pauls who, and these teams from France and England and Pascal, those guys came to World Foods competing for the first time, hadn't stepped foot inside that arena before, and walked out winning the title. That team Air Force, first time coming in there competing, walked out winning the title. So some of your best first-timer stories are literally international teams. This is the first time they'd come over here and compete. Yeah, there was that couple that was from London. She was Afghanistan, from Afghanistan through London. Yep. Yeah. She did the live fire. No, she won something, I remember. I mean, they were animals, man. Like, they were amazing. I mean, she killed it. Yeah. Because you guys, you and Pooch uh, judged we that judging one. That, yeah. And then you, me, and Pooch judged the Coasties against the Air Force for the MRE, which was a brilliant yeah. uh, thing that you guys did. You came up with, by the way, that category. Taking an MRE, making that was, and that's something we try to do a lot. Is we want to bring in anytime we can emphasis and highlight military teams, and we want to do these kind of things because a lot of times we do. World Foods happens to fall around Veterans Day. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, the energy level. We always want to put that. Listen, the energy level throughout the whole event was was pretty pretty solid, and but once you got into like you know. the, the 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 different branches against each other. Oh, that was great. The energy level was through the roof. I loved it. I thought it was I'll, great. I'll tell you, the Coasties were a team to really watch. I mean, they really threw it down. Yeah. Hands down. I mean, they really know what they're doing. Yeah, I had a great time with them. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. they 
they're, you know, they've got that military training. They're a well-oiled machine. They work together almost, almost flawlessly with very, if you did, if you watched them without a lot of communication, it was everybody knew their job. Everybody knew what they needed to do and they banged it out. I wish we could do that here on this show. That would be great. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. Silence. They really, I'm kidding guys. <laughs> John, come come back. Where you go, John? Come on. I'm kidding. Um, Mark, on the show coming up, uh, I got to check the date, but we're gonna have actually, um, you know, Freddie uh, Casagrande from Smoking Beards. He's gonna be he's gonna be on the show. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna have him on. It's gonna be a good one, real good one. And and, and if you look at his social media, it's pretty like I can't imagine. Like you were saying before about barbecue and. Um, n- not repeating and stuff. I can't imagine how this guy wouldn't, couldn't, wouldn't that can't happen with, because he's that their whole team was amazing. They put out some amazing stuff, and he's a, another showman. I was talking about how John McFadden is a a showman. He's not just a, a great chef, but he's he interacts with everybody. S- so does this guy. So does Fred. Was Fred in Dubai? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. But, you know, like, for example, when, when Pooch and I were out there, um, when, you know, judging the live fire, um, Fred, yeah, that's right, <laughs> Fred was the only team, there were, I think, 20 to 18 or 20 teams, something like that. He was the only one that stopped what he was doing and started cutting, you know, pieces of meat and say, hey, hey, guys, come here, ba 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 try this, ba ba the only one. Um, and their setup was great. Their food was great personalities are top notch and, and he follows up like we've been communicating back and forth now since since uh dallas since november it's pretty great pretty amazing mark are, are, so what's the story man are we are, what's up i want to i want to get to the next one what are we doing here what's going on should we talk about the next event yeah what's going he, on? he wants he wants to know if the podcast will be going to the world food championship uh <laughs> in indy <laughs> yeah well i could say this <clears throat> I could say this, in all the conversations that have already been had, without any bias whatsoever, because you guys are friends. You, you know, you guys are my friends. We all know this. The the powers that be at WFC is one of the things they said was a highlight of this last year in Dallas was having you guys right up front and center. They want that again. All right, well. They want to see you guys there podcasting. They felt that it was great for the champions to be able to come and, and record and talk and talk about their passion for food sport and, and food with you guys. And it also gave the aesthetic exactly what you're looking for. If you go to any sporting event out there, you have media row where there's interviews being conducted 24 seven. And that's what you guys did. So you rocked it out. You came and did your thing. You rocked it out. And WFC wants to have you back. Well, we rocked out with the mics out, you know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> well, some people have bigger mics than others, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that was shots fired yeah that's true and you know what and uh that's, you know what that was good good I, job Mark. i will <laughs> I, will, I will tell you that one of the biggest things that i will take from the world food championships is the memories that we actually created there i mean everything that happened there was ridiculous yeah it was just so much fun it really was and that you know that's like that that whole that story was just Walking into the house, had no idea who was there, and I walk in with four racks of lamb. Hey, do you mind if I start cooking? <laughs> He's like, well, yeah, sure. And here's his bat sauce. Go ahead, and, go ahead and put this on everything. And it was delicious. Oh, my God. And then in McLeod's place, when we walked into that, the la- was it last night there? Yeah. Uh, just the, some of the competitors were actually, you know, cooking. And she made that tiramisu. Yeah. <sighs> that was mind blowing. Oh, yeah. She is yeah. an incredible. Yeah. That family actually is incredible. They've they are they going to the final table? Any of that family? Are you talking about the wins? Is that the wins? Preston yeah. win and all. Yeah, that? yeah, I think that's what. Yeah, no, they they're not going to final table. That was a big shock. Wow, they kind of rippled through that entire chef category. Is the fact that they're not going to final table, and it was Robert Rose who won the chef category, huh. longtime competitor but he's going to the final table now. And, you know, Preston went on after winning. He won it as, as the youngest champion ever was barely 18 and wins world foods, then turns around the next year and ends up on uh, Gordon Ramsay's next level chef. And he's done taste of London. He spent a month over cooking in London. Wow. 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 How come we didn't get him on the show? Who Preston? Yeah. Cause I had no voice. 
What does that have to do with anything? How am I supposed to talk? You know, you need to do a better job. All right. <laughs> I'll try. I'll still. Jeff, keep, you're out. Mark, I'll keep, you're in. I'll oh, keep the man. cooking. Tell you what, I'm kidding, Jeff. I love you. Know? <laughs> I, 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 well, listen. funny story. You know, here's some funny. Preston and I were talking, and because you know that my family and their family are all very close, and Preston pulled me aside afterward. He goes, you know, if you ever want to stop hosting, you and I will go enter World Foods together as a team. Oof. You should and do I'm it. Like, I, I really, you, you know, I really thought about that for half a beat, half a beat, uh, maybe less, uh, you know, but like, so you should take one, like, you know, piece of time, not, not, not to be a, a competitor throughout, but you should do something like that. You should cook something at some point for some reason, you know, not necessarily maybe competing, but just as a, a side show piece, you should do something like that. I, f- I feel like that would be great for, uh, for the, for the whole uh, program. We should have a Franchise. show called the Suit it's Guy, and then he cooks in suits. He cooks in suit. No, man, that's not good. <laughs> um, I usually they usually have me cook champions tables for sponsors and VIPs, or I'll go and cook at like a charity dinner for WFC stuff. So I do do that. It's just not something that ends up being way out in front. Did you not see this guy working his tail off that day? I mean, the whole time, there's no time for anybody to do anything. I mean, you oh. and I had nothing. To, we couldn't do anything. No, I, I mean, it was I just, it. you know. Uh, do you do you, real, you realize we run a a, a, pod, a food podcast that's supposed to be entertaining, right? Mm-hmm. You Don't forget that. Uh, I'm trying not to. Oh, my God. Especially with your dad jokes. But does, what that I'm start <laughs> at, does that start at like a certain minute mark? No, a minute oh one, God. minute two, minute three. We're at the end. Like usually, it's right at the end is when the entertaining stuff starts happening, and then it's over. You know, or the mics are bigger than other mics, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, you know. exactly. We're just a platform, man. You know, you know, we just bring on the entertaining cats like you, and that's it, man. You know, we're just a platform. We're the we're the vehicle. You know, that's all. That's all we are. What can I tell you? Uh, sorry. Here we are. Now's the time. There you go. Did you see the freaking picture of the the suit that I sent you, Mark? Did you Did you see it yet? I did. Okay, because I, I was not waiting. Nearly flashy enough. I I thought so too. Oh, and then that's why I said you're going to like this. And he goes, I kind of do like it. Well, wait a minute. It's, you don't think it's, that's it's, flashy? It needs enough? to be more. No. Let the you let know, the master gonna... pick out what you're supposed to wear. Uh, we're going to talk off air, Mark. No, you're not. Because Mark <laughs> Hen- Mark Henry's going to text him. You're gonna You're going to get a thing in your uh, IG. Check your IG now. See if he's. Uh, no, texting. I, I, he doesn't want to because he probably did. No, I was just on there. I didn't, I, <laughs> right? I don't think so. Actually, you know what? He shouldn't DM you. He should actually put it where the comments where we can all see that. Oh my god! And that way you can't sit there and go, Mark Henry didn't uh, DM me, so uh, he didn't slide in my DMs or anything like that. <laughs> we're kind of, this is not that kind of show. He'll just. He'll just tell you that you're too scared to wear the suit. Whatever. Uh, th- that's fine. Uh, I can take that. But I, I, if he doesn't, listen. How are you? That's the, listen, no, no, no. That's the, that was the, uh, the deal, man. I, I feel like one of the, one of the, our listeners will get him to wear the suit too. No. No. Yeah. There isn't not one of them that can uh, make that happen. Yeah, probably. No, probably not. Yeah. Get out of here. Watch. <laughs> no, you watch. I'm, I'm, I'm the, the one that dresses luggage. myself. Huh? What did we'll you just replace your luggage at one of the events? <laughs> <laughs> just don't wow. put it. Don't don't put it this into the car. Oh, wow, that don't, would be terrible. Don't put it in the truck and let it hit a deer. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right. Yeah. Listen, um, Mark. It, I tell you, <laughs> we are going to have fun, <laughs> and. Uh, how does uh, what's your preferred method of people finding you? Is it uh, Instagram? Yeah, man, follow me on Instagram or even Facebook. Both of them are Mark Conway Media. All right, excellent. Um, let's. Uh, I'm going to let you know because uh, I've got Fred coming on the show soon, and actually jo- uh, Chef McFadden. We're going to have him on again soon too. Um, I will keep you looped in on that. This way, uh, we'll make this into a uh, a fun thing. If I don't see something from Mark Henry, this thing is 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 a no go. All right, I just want to put it out there. <laughs> I it's March seventh that we have that event that he has to wear this, so that's how much time we have. Shut up, silence. All right. Oh, good to know, Mark, Mark Conway. You're you're awesome, man. Thanks for being on the program, Jeff. John, amazing day today. Sure. Um, hey, people out there, Peninsula Food Service, Central Florida chefs, come on. 
Step up the program. Pro teams. We are out. Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing. Deliver healthy taste options to clientele and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com.